All right, take a look at number one. I only have two examples for today. I only have two examples. Take a look. We'll use our compass later, so save play time for later, a couple of you, all right, with your compasses. Here's the deal today. It's still a regular polygon, except it's not going to turn out to be a 3060 or 4545, and I'm still responsible for the perimeter and the apothem length. All right, so if I take a look right here, I have a regular pentagon. I'm pretty confident in saying you guys want to keep with one half apothem times perimeter as the formula, or do we want to break it up into five triangles? Okay. All right, here we go. So I'm not given the apothem or the perimeter here. I'm just given, what is that 10? What do we call that 10 right there? That's the radius length. Okay. So how do I get to my apothem length and a side length so I can multiply it by five? Well, I'm still going to tackle this the same way we did on Friday. Find angle RPQ in your group right now. What is angle RPQ, that full angle right now? Still going to approach it the same way. Find RPQ. RPQ, when you find it, six, what do you have? RPQ, 70. Two degrees, 360 divided by five. Apothem is still doing what? Bisecting that 72 degrees. So RPS will be how, what's the measure of RPS? 36 degrees. All right, well, it's not 30, 60, 45, 45 anymore. I have no idea what the rule is for 36, 90, whatever the other angle is. All right, but I still have a way to find the sides because this is still what type of triangle RPS? Right triangle, and I still have a device out there that will find me any side in a right triangle, and that is Sokotoa. So that's what we're changing gears with today, is you don't have rules for it, but you can use Sokotoa. So just to make things easier, I'm going to call PSA for apothem, and I'm going to call SRS for the side length here. All right, so let's find the apothem first. All right, so I have to determine sine, cosine, tangent. Here we go. Uh, 29, if I'm going from the 36, what's the 10 in this right triangle? Hypotenuse, and what's the apothem? Adjacent, Dan, what do I use with adjacent hypotenuse? Cosine, there you go. So I'm gonna say cosine 36, adjacent over hypotenuse. So am I going to put the 10 or the A first? A, the unknown apothem over 10. And then back in the day, how did we solve these? We're going to cross multiply. And you're not going to do what to this apothem length yet? Round, don't round it. I wasn't looking for the apothem. I'm looking for the area of the full thing. So don't round this sucker yet. Make sure you're in degree mode. I don't know if you've been playing around or let somebody borrow it. Make sure you're in degree mode. Cosine 36 times 10. 8.09016994 as the apothem. Everybody good? And then I'm going to need somebody to find uh, the side now. And there's really two different ways you could do it. You could keep using Sokotoa, or now that we just found the apothem, what else could I? You could also use Pythag now, but make sure you use the full decimal if you're using Pythag. Okay? I prefer not here to use Pythag. I'd rather use a little review for Sokotoa. So, four, you're up. Uh, 36, what's the 10 still? And now what's the side S I need to find? So you're gonna add, you're gonna use what if I use Sokotoa with the opposite and hypotenuse? Sine sine of 36 equals opposite s over hypotenuse 10, and I'm still gonna cross multiply. Five point eight seven seven eight five. Two, five, two, three. It's important to remember that is not going into our formula. Everyone real, that's not the perimeter. I still have to, here you go. Don't yell anything out. Think about this. I still have to do what to this? 
Think about it, don't yell it out. This is not going in for P in one half AP, far from it. We still got two more things we have to do here. What do I need to do to this 5.877 before it gets plugged in? Uh, 22, you're up. Multi okay, hold on. Multiply it by two. That gets you a side length. And then to get the perimeter, multiply that number by five. five. So basically multiply the whole thing by 10. Move the decimal over one spot. This is what's getting plugged into the formula, the 58.77852523. So perimeter, apothem, round to the nearest tenth. Make sure you're multiplied by one half as well. And then when you're ready with that calculation to the nearest tenth, let me know what you end up with. Two, when you're ready. What do we have? 237.8. What else you got for me? Square, Square inches. <laughs> Anything from you guys? We okay there? Go in. You and your group then. Tackle an octagon. And that, hey, that line is perpendicular. Okay, that eight is perpendicular to the side, coming from the center. Also, just a little warning, when you draw your line, if you're drawing lines in, the eight was originally the apothem, all right? I know when you draw it in, all of a sudden it looks like the hypotenuse. It is not, all right? Please remember that. Two 
212.1, keep working. If you can't figure it out, call me over. If you're good with that, your work matches up to 212.1, you can uh, get your Regents exam out because we're going to try to burst through as many problems as we can. But make sure you can get the 212.2, please. Point one, excuse me. Good here, stud. Why do you have two different? Eight was the apothem. That's the apothem length from the center down to the side. That's the apothem length. So eight's the apothem. Okay. And then you should have done tangent to find the side length. Because you had, look, that angle here. It's half of 45, so at 22 and a half, you had opposite, and the 8, remember, belongs to here, so you had adjacent. Right? A D well it should fit into hills, so I'm thinking yeah. segment over leg equals leg over high yep, that's fine. Yep. Because that's hills right there. Okay, here we go. Let's see how many we can get through here. Looking at fifty five. Oh perfect. We can get through a bunch. Okay, here we go. Twenty four. Last multiple choice. Okay, 24 is trying to suck you right in. Suck you right in. Oh, this is, I don't know, I don't have no idea why I'm doing this, but I'm going to set them equal to each other, and I'm sure the answer will be there. It's not how we roll here. Okay, they want you to suck you right in, set them equal. That's not how it goes. We need to remember the one fact here that says if sine, the value of sine and the value of cosine are equal, what do you know about their angles? Do we remember that way back in the day here? If sine and cosine are going to be equal to each other. Their angles better complementary. Better be complementary. Okay, better be complementary. Because, hey, hey, remember... Sine of 40 is the same as the cosine of 50 on your calculator, All right? So sine and cosine are only equal if their angles are complementary. So I need to take 2x plus 7, add it to 4x minus 7, and set it equal to 90. All right, I'm, I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure if you set them equal, the answer's there, because that's what they want you to do. So you have 6x equals 90, x equals 15. All right. Now, before I go on to the next one, I, I hopefully you don't come down to this point, but desperation mode. Let's say you don't remember that they're complementary. This is a multiple choice question. The answer is there, and everybody has calculators, correct? Easy way to do, plug in 7, do the sine of that angle. Plug in 7, do the cosine. Are they equal? And then keep going through. There's only going to be one out of the four that they are equal. So if worse comes to worse, plug it in. Okay, the answer is there somewhere. All right, if you don't remember that they're complementary. All good. Okay, I think you're going to need the compass on this. Next one, 25. Here was the construction for this one. A little tricky, this one. Usually they're pretty straightforward. This one had you thinking a little bit. Okay, here we go. We got a chord. Draw a diameter in. Construct a diameter, not just draw it in with your straight edge. Construct a diameter. Whoa, huh? Well, there's a reason they gave you the chord. They want you to do one of the theorems. 
term from the circle unit to make sure that what you draw in is a truly a diameter. Anybody remember the theorem that involved a chord and a diameter? Orion? Well, not, not every diameter drawn to a chord. If the chord is being, okay, it's a diameter if it's going to be a bisector and perpendicular to it. So bottom line is, what do I need you to do to chord AB? Do a per, no, 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 do a perpendicular bisector. All right, and that line you draw in is guaranteed to be the diameter if it's a perpendicular bisector. So open up your compass more than half the length. Draw a decent sized arc like we've been doing all year. Keep the compass. just opening the same. Go over the other end point. Line up your straight edge and draw in your diameter. If you just look at what we did, that's pretty darn easy. But you got to remember to do that. That's the thing. You got to remember that, okay, if that's really a diameter, it's going to be perpendicular and bisecting the chord if that's really a diameter. So you got to get to that point before you get real easy. All right, we're good there. Okay, next one up. I've got plenty of time still. 30, 30. All right, here we go. We got Aaliyah. She's doing some dilation to 5, 4x plus 3y equals 24. She's going to dilate that sucker by 2. And the dilation has to happen around this point, 3, 4. And she's saying, hey, I think this new equation is going to be, you can read it, negative 4 thirds x plus 16. Is she correct? Well, let's figure it out. First of all, what's this line look like? 4x plus 3y. Let's dilate it ourselves and see if she's correct. Let's dilate that point ourselves. I'd like to see what it looks like on a graph, but I can't do that until it's y equals. So can I get a little help doing that? Uh, 27, can I get a little help getting into y equals form? Okay, so 3y equals negative 4x plus 24. What do you want to do next? Okay, so I'll end up with y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 8, everyone. For that line. Remember, that this is the line we're going to dilate. This is the line we're going to dilate. And I know most of you are saying, oh, it's a scale factor of 2. 2 times 8 is 16. She's right. Let's move on. And that's not how it works. That would work, right? That works if I dilate it around what point? Origin. Not dilating around the origin when you just multiply by two, the y-intercept by 2. All right, so let's see what this line looks like. So 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then she's got to go down 4 over 3. Down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And then as you graph that line... Uh, where is the point she's going to dilate around? 3, 4. Where do you know this 3, 4 is? Yeah. There's 3, 4. And do we remember from this unit what happens when you dilate from a point that's on the line? Stays the same. 
because dilating by two means all these points are going to get twice as far away as they are now. So it's going to get twice as far away still on the line. Pick any point and dilate it by two, it's still going to be on the line. So is she right? No. Because the dilated line, and again, this is not word for word what you need to have, but at least express that the dilated line is the same as the original. I'm just going to say because the dilated line has an equation You can go negative four thirds x plus eight. You can go back to the original one they gave you. It's up to you. Yep. Well, just say why she's wrong. A, a no, a no wouldn't cut it. Cut it. What you, why you say no, that's up to you. Okay, but a no, just no, wouldn't cut it. Everyone all good? Everyone see at least the trap too, because that's what I want you to understand on some of these problems, where the trap is so you don't fall into it. They wanted you to say, oh, multi scale factor of 2, 2 times 8 is 16, she's right. Slope doesn't change when you dilate, she's right. But again, that only happens if we dilate around what point? The origin, you multiply your coordinates by whatever the scale factor is. All right? Uh, I really think, uh, yeah, the next one was going to be a big uh, distance formula proof. So and we don't have uh, 30 seconds we can do it in. So we'll just leave it at that. Tonight's homework, there is one problem where you have to convert units. It's on your packet and in your assignment sheet, the conversion you need.